Scientist in charge of, uh, I was the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. <laughs> I'm not sure what day it is, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not precisely sure if the eruption is over. I'm trapped here in it, uh, some kind of military installation in some godforsaken part of Colorado. <laughs> we've got no food, and we've got no power, and, uh, the ash fall has uh, contaminated the water supply. <coughs> the air is so thick with it that we can barely breathe. These, these men that I'm with, they think if we stay put that we're going to be rescued. But uh, I honestly can't believe that we just watch and wait. We're as good as dead. happened, many visitors to Yellowstone were blissfully unaware that it was volcanic. After all, where was the cone-shaped volcano, like Mount St. Helens or Vesuvius? They didn't realize that they were actually standing on top of it, that beneath their feet was one of the largest volcanoes in the world. The truth is, we were only just beginning to understand the workings of the park ourselves. And Virgil, the virtual geophysical imaging laboratory, well, that was going to help us. Or at least, uh, that's what our boss, Michael Eldridge, tried to persuade the press. With it, we can input data from seismometers, GPS instruments, and video cameras strategically positioned around the park to produce a living, breathing 3D model of what's happening here at Yellowstone. Virgil can also help us to understand the park's beating heart. The vast reservoir of red-hot molten rock that lies just a few kilometers beneath where you're sitting now. The sleeping dragon that powers all of the geysers and hot springs, mud spots and steam vents that draw people here in their millions every year. See those colors around the edges? Yeah. They're creatures. Creatures? <laughs> tiny, tiny creatures called thermophiles. You can only see them with a microscope, and they can only live in very, very hot water. In fact, some scientists believe that all life on Earth began in places just like this three and a half billion years ago. Billion? <laughs> Maggie Chin, KCBZ News, Salt Lake City. Hello. Hello. Your model is very impressive, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, Miss Chin. My question is, will it help? Help what, Miss Chin? Well, in the last decade, we've seen more and more ground uplift at Yellowstone. Twelve feet, I believe, is the conservative estimate. Well, that estimate is not conservative. Nonetheless, many of your colleagues in the scientific community believe that it's one of many signs that an eruption is coming. I'm going to let Rick Lieberman, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, deal with that one. Rick? Thank you. Uh, this is a sequence of Yellowstone's geological behavior over the past 100 years. 
Okay, there we go. You see, what, what we have beneath our feet here at Yellowstone is a, is a type of volcano, a type of hidden volcano, uh, referred to as a, as a restless caldera. Uh, caldera, because you'll note it resembles the shape of a uh, cauldron, and uh, restless because it spends much of its life doing what, what you see it's doing right here. It's huffing and puffing as the magma and the hydrothermal systems beneath the ground rise and fall uh, for reasons that we actually don't fully yet understand. Uh, this uh, uplift that you've mentioned, Maggie, is very simply just a part of everyday life uh, here at Yellowstone. So we're definitely not looking at an imminent super eruption. Well, let, me, let me say this. The chances of a uh, so-called uh, super eruption are on the order of something like one in 600,000. In fact, it's, it's more than twice as likely that an airplane will crash into your backyard. So. Haven't we just seen extra ground uplift at Norris? Yes, yeah, we, ha we have as a matter of fact, but uh, that may well be uh, hydrothermal, you know, a build, up of, uh, a build up of water. I'll tell you what, Miss Chin, you give me 10 bucks right now, and I will offer you odds of 600,000 to one. So uh, if this thing does go up, you'll, you'll make a killing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't mean you see it. Daddy! Hey. No, I'm not saying you do. Hey! Hey, how are you? Hey. Oh, go faithful. Hey, where are you? Great. Look, as Eldridge said, it is a tool. Oh, come on, it's unreliable. We're not relying on it. Hey, what was that? What uh, was that? that? That was a press conference. That was a joke. We were unveiling Virgil. What, what, what did you want me to say? You know, hello, everyone. This is Virgil, and it frankly has no more of an idea of what's going on down there than we do, but thank you for coming. <laughs> Buckle up. Ah, you check out the busted seismometers. I'll get there tomorrow. Good. Here, here's a point. We could have replaced all of those seismometers for the money spent on Virgil. That's the point. Yeah, this big V will have its uses. I'll see you soon. Good to see you, man. See you, pal. Listen, I, I need the uh, coordinates of the Taiwan quake. Yeah. Kaohsiung region. Yeah. Hey. Five seven. Yep. Three three. Okay. This thing takes up far too much space, you know. Thanks, Matt. Guess what this is? You tell me. Pumice. It comes from deep inside a volcano. It's so hot, the rocks all melted. But when the volcano blows up, it gets blown high into the sky. And guess what? It Floats. Oh, my coffee. How <laughs> that? A rock that floats. Yeah, okay, Paul. That's enough. 